I think what some people don't realize is that this uh, this link that I just probably watched it for the second time my screen rant is incorrect because um, we now have the extended version of Suicide Squad and some of these scenes that they're talking about actually are in the movie so that's interesting because these are apparently 10 Suicide Squad Joker deleted scenes that would have changed everything well a um, they did um, what's interesting about the scenes they're talking about is I know about them and you can see them in my much longer video which you don't need to see because it's extremely long but if you do want to see it I actually was able to argue with YouTube to convince them to put it up so fuck you YouTube but anyway um, the point is is that um, one of the scenes that's included is the famous Harley on the I'm hoping it's a Harley Davidson chase after the Joker. The Joker makes it perfectly clear that he doesn't need a sidekick. He doesn't want a sidekick. He doesn't need anybody. But as I tried to show with the Heath Ledger Joker, is he's not Heath Ledger. Jared Leto is not Heath Ledger's Joker. David Ayer made it very clear that he did not want Jared Leto to become Heath Ledger's Joker. He even turned him down with him trying to cut his face. It just wouldn't work. It's just... Heath Ledger's Joker is so iconic that if you just copied it, you would get so much bad press, it would just be not shocking, but just overwhelming. So they didn't. What the Joker gets is a grill, which has never been ever written into the comic books, which is pretty cool if you think about it. So David Ayer still had control. Unfortunately, then we have, you know, fucking Warner Brothers destroying everything. But the point is, is that before that happened, we had a lot of good scenes. We had a scene where Batman punches the Joker's teeth out. Maybe not all of them, but part of it. But what's interesting is in the movie Suicide Squad, if you really focus on the Joker, you'll notice that sometimes his teeth have more metal in them than, than they did before. Also what's interesting is there's a scene that, again, was cut from the theater movie where the Joker is just like, you know, I wouldn't want you to hurt those porcelain cap teeth because he doesn't have porcelain cap teeth anymore. He has metal. But by the end of the movie, when he saves Harley in the in, uh, in Bel Rev, he has a full grill. So it's very interesting exactly what happened there. Like, did Batman punch him once? Or did Batman, or did someone else fight him that knocked all his teeth out? Like, it's not fucking clear, but it also doesn't fucking matter. The point is, is that that's what happened. But um, anyway, so some little tidbit that you might not know about Suicide Squad is um, when Harley fires the gun at the innocent bystander. That's Heath, Le that's Heath Ledger. She just shot Heath Ledger. Because Heath Ledger's iconic scene, well, he has many iconic scenes, but one of his most iconic scenes is when he's in a truck. He's like, I like this job. I like it. Like it. He has a better impression than I do. But anyway, the point is, is that's one of his biggest scenes. His truck is his, his weapon, like uh, Bruce Willis's character in Live Free or Die Hard. His tr tr the truck is his weapon, too. But And it's a great scene, because Batman flips the truck. I mean, if anything, Heath Ledger probably was in the truck when it got flipped, because he's a method actor. But then again, I don't know. Because uh, my buddy George is telling me how they wouldn't actually fire real bullets at people. So <laughs> it's possible that he wasn't actually in the truck due to him not surviving. <laughs> But uh, that scene is amazing, and he's like gets out of the truck, and it's just like, oh, like he really has just been knocked over, like literally been flipped over, and it's just like, oh, it's a great scene. He takes out a machine gun, just goes, Duh! and he just shoots the Lincoln. I'm pretty sure it's really great. Like he's just so trigger happy. It's amazing, and he's like, you know, why use a knife? Guns are too quick. You can't savor all the little emotion. Like, you can't say that Jared Leto's Joker is better than Heath Ledger's Joker. You can't. Because it's true. I mean, yes, there's a lot of good Jared Leto Joker scenes. But a lot of those scenes we didn't get to see because A, the movie is called Suicide Squad, and B, we had Warner Brothers. Fuck everything up. But anyway, so what you might not know is, so Harley kills Heath Ledger. The fat guy in the truck is supposed to be Heath Ledger. That's what they were going for. And that's why Warner Brothers didn't want it, because they knew 
what they were saying, which is basically Heath Ledger is dead, and literally he is dead, and welcome Jared Leto to the Joker screen. But I think what Jared Leto did, which Heath Ledger did not do, is Jared Leto stayed in character when they weren't filming. Heath Ledger broke out of character when they weren't filming. Now, I'm not saying that Heath Ledger decision to not, you know, go out of character, staying. I'm not saying that Heath Ledger's refusal to stay in character, or his decision not to stay in character when he's not getting filmed, is a bad decision. I'm just saying it makes Jared Little Joker different than Heath Ledger's Joker. It adds another layer to the character, because if you really want to be a character, you've got to inhabit them as much as you can. Now this doesn't mean that you have to become them. This doesn't mean that you have to be a method actor. Whatever you want to do is what you should do. Bruce Wayne, Christian Bale hated the Batman suit. So Christopher Nolan made Batman suffer. Watch Batman Begins. He gets lit on fire by Scarecrow. Scarecrow wants to kill this guy. He doesn't want him messing up his plans. The Joker wants to kill this guy. He doesn't want him messing up his plans. And then he realizes, you know what? Without you, life isn't very fun. And the only person that really showed that the Joker needs Batman more than... Uh, Mark Hamill? No. No, the person that really showed that the Joker needs Batman, was Mark Hamill, is Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill is still, still alive. Well, he probably would still do Joker stuff if they gave him the right part. Well, he did do the voice for the killing joke, so there you go. But, um, yeah, he shows you that, the, that Batman needs the Joker. The Joker needs Batman. But what's also interesting is if you interview the guy who was the first speaker for Batman, he says that the Joker would always try to kill Batman, but... Batman would never kill the Joker. So that's an interesting scene, because in Heath Ledger's Joker, it turns out that the Joker would never kill Batman because he's too much fun. In Jared Leto's aspect, Jared Leto would kill the Joker. Jared Leto's Joker would kill the Joker. What the fuck? Jared Leto's Joker. Yes, would kill himself, apparently. Oh, uh, no. Jared Leto's Joker would kill Batman. He has no interest of Batman staying alive. He even has a tattoo with a knife through the, the Batarang, which is really just the bat symbol, the Batman symbol. But So that's an interesting take, that Heath Ledger's Joker would not kill Batman, but Jared Leto's Joker would. It's a very interesting take. Of course, he's not going to kill Batman unless the, Ben Affleck quits. <laughs> Should be really funny, and actually I would watch that movie where Jared Leto's Joker kills Ben Affleck's Batman. That would be dope, but that's probably not going to happen. Anyway, the point is is that there are a lot of tidbits that you people missed that you probably didn't even know, and one of them is that, yeah, Harley kills Heath Ledger's Joker. And uh, I'm sorry if I made you all cry now. Bye.